Sunny me, Claire Baker, former Clutterholic, founder of ClutterClearing.net, uh, recording my weekly vlog about my own clutter clearing journey, which is uh, to do with my weight loss clutter clearing journey. Uh, recording from this end of the garden again today, because uh, uh, it just makes a bit of, bit of a change. Uh, not quite as sunny as it was last week. Uh, I hope you've had a, a good week. How have you got on? Do let me know. Um, I weighed myself this morning and I had lost a pound, uh, which I was pleased with. Wasn't as much uh, as I would have hoped. Um, but I'm back down to 200 pounds, having bobbed up and down uh, between sort of 200 and 205. Um, my next goal is uh, to get to 196. That's where I want uh, to be. Um, let's say by the end of July. Now, uh, I do uh, know or suspect why it was only a pound, because I did, I did go mad on the carbs uh, last Tuesday and last Thursday, um, which, which is frustrating. Um, but I've realized that there's a relationship with that. Um, I, met, I met a friend for lunch last Tuesday, Tuesday we went to Cafe Nero a coffee shop uh, and I had carrot cake because they do nice carrot cake uh, but again that's waning didn't really do much for me uh, a bit like the scones a few weeks ago when I was in Cornwall so I, I, I don't think probably one or two more pieces of that in the future and then I'll be done I'll be done um, and then afterwards I did the same as I've done before I went into uh, Marks and Spencers, which is a department store which has a food hall, uh, to get my husband some donuts, and I picked up white chocolate cookies for myself. So, uh, moral of the story is only take in the cash that you know you're going to spend, or limit the amount of cash. Um, don't take a card. But it's, it's so like clutter clearing our physical clutter in our home. Uh, one of the challenges that I get my clients to do in the in the first few weeks is the shopping challenge and the shopping challenge is about minimizing the amount you spend because just like me uh, uh, with my food um, we can so often go to the supermarket we might even go with a list of what we need but extra things jump in the trolley jump in the cart don't they uh, and that's like me I was like no I'm just gonna have a piece of carrot cake with my friend for lunch and then I got cookies as well so um, uh, and so one of the challenges with the shopping challenge for our physical clutter is to actually go shopping with cash. Very old school. Um, <laughs> so I kind of need to do the same, don't I? With, with, uh, when I go out and, and meet friends uh, for lunch uh, or, or for a, a coffee and, and, and cake. Um, because that way I literally only have what is in my pocket. Um, because <laughs> in a way I can't be trusted because the temptation gets the better of me, even though I know, in my head, I know that, uh, you know, they're not going to do anything for me. Uh, and if you like, the sugar high will be short lived. Um, and it will take me out of ketosis, which is what I'm in, where, where my body is using up my fat stores because it's got no carbs and sugar. Uh, I know it's going to take two, three days for my body to start using up the fat again. So, um, yes, learning. Uh, talking of which, we'll get on to my five uh, success factors uh, in a moment. Um, I did want to share with you, um, every day I have some, some playing cards uh, with, with inspirational sayings on, and every day I uh, shuffle them seven times, because the magic number is seven. We love the number seven, especially when we're clearing our clutter. Um, so I shuffle them seven times, and whatever one is on the top is the one that is, is if you like, my motivational quote for the day. Um, it really helps kind of get my head in a good in a good place as well as reading my affirmations uh, before I actually start doing any work and I it was funny actually today's no such thing as coincidence uh, today's card says nothing is by chance everything is a lesson for me to learn um, and I thought that was very apt given uh, uh, my situation with the carrot cake and the, and, and the cookies uh, this week. So yes, I'm learning. It's, it's taking a little bit longer than I would have hoped for it to sink in and really become an action, i.e. 
don't eat the carrot cake, don't get the cookies. Um, what should I have done instead? Probably bought a block of brie. Love my brie. Um, so uh, yeah, um, very apt saying for today. Okay, so uh, in terms of my weekly uh, five success factors, so feedback and learning. Um, there's been a lot of that this week, not just with uh, the carrot cake and the cookies. Um, I went back to my old school on Saturday uh, for prize giving, but, all, but and they have it every year, but I went back uh, specifically because my old housemaster, I went to a boarding school for two years uh, for my air levels, so from 16 to 18. It was a boys boarding school uh, that only took girls in the sixth form and there were only a few of us girls compared to the boys. Um, and I can honestly say it was the, the happiest two years of, of my education. Um, seemed a lot longer than two years uh, compared to two years now. Um, and uh, it was really interesting because it's actually 25 years since I left that school. Uh, then took a gap year, then went to university. And it has always had a very special place in my heart, that school. So when I got the letter saying that my housemaster uh, was retiring, it was a great opportunity to, to go back and obviously say, say goodbye to him, say thank you, and, but also a bit of a trip down memory lane. I hadn't expected it to be quite such a trip down memory lane. Um, because, I guess, because I'm on this journey, uh, some memories associated with my weight. So for example, uh, I remembered that the boys used to call me Bernard. That was my nickname. Uh, not to my face, behind my back. And why did they call me Bernard? They called me Bernard after a Saint Bernard dog. Because I was uh, probably the largest girl who was there. And when I found out that this was my nickname, it, obviously it really upset me. Um, I knew that I was the largest girl there and one of the things that upset me as well was the fact that I couldn't borrow other girls clothes other girls would swap their clothes and they you, you we didn't have a uniform but but we had to wear dark colored clothes and, and, and dark uh, and shirts um, and I couldn't borrow any of the other girls clothes because I was bigger than they were now the nice thing is is that now right now I'm a size smaller than I was back then um, but again, that was a memory uh, that obviously came back. Um, memories of my first true love, uh, who I met at that school, um, which was pretty intense. Um, memories of being ill. I had uh, ME when I was at this school and I spent quite a bit of time in the, in the sanatorium, like the nurses station. Um, and it was interesting because uh, there was one of the girls who was in my year, I shared a study with her. Um, she was at this, reu uh, she was at this uh, uh, prize giving day as well, there for, for our housemaster, Mr. James, who was leaving or uh, retiring. And she, uh, when she s spoke to me, she, she, remi she reminded me, you know, about the, the ME. And she said, oh, I've often thought of you because I've had friends uh, or known people who have had ME and thought, no, I, I believe this because I believed Claire. And I said to her, I said, yeah, I said, uh, I look back on it now and I actually think it was childhood depression. I think the symptoms were very, very real, but I think actually it was childhood depression because my ME got noticeably better when I was at the school. Uh, and I think my ME was uh, a reaction to, to, to being in a, in a home a family home that wasn't really a happy a happy place my mother wasn't uh, happy my father wasn't there a lot my brother was at boarding school from a young age so i think it was i think it was very genuine symptoms but i think it was a response to a, 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 a if you like a depression uh, about about life if you like because um, like I say, it was noticeably better than uh, when I had been living at home um, for, my, for my earlier years. Uh, so that was interesting, because it was also interesting that that's kind of how, in her mind, she'd, she'd marked me uh, because, of, because of the ME. Uh, I completely understand why. Um, 
so yeah, that was interesting. It was also interesting because it was lovely to see my old housemaster and it was lovely to get that vibe at this school again because I had so loved my time there. Um, but it was very much a, that was a chapter of my life. I'm not in that place anymore. I'm not in that place of privilege anymore like I was uh, back then. Um, and it and it and it struck me and not really upset me but touched me really hit a chord when my housemaster was giving a, a speech because um, uh, he was presenting the, the prizes because he was retiring it was his last chance and he sort of finished by saying uh, you know remember that you can uh, get as many experiences in life as you can uh, because then you have more choices and just make sure that you end up doing something uh, that you really enjoy uh, in life as a career, you know, and be kind to, to one another. Um, and that really struck a chord because I thought, yes, I have done that. I have ended up doing something that I really love and really enjoy. Um, I don't do it for the money because I don't make loads of money. Um, but actually, you're absolutely right. Happiness and contentment is so much more important than status uh, and money. Um, and it took me took me till I was 28 to figure out what made me really happy and what I really enjoyed doing. Um, I kind of wish I'd had that guidance back then. Who knows? I might have done. You know, when you're when you're 16 to 18, you don't necessarily listen to the adults, do you? Because you think, oh, they're all fuddy duddies. Um, but now, looking back, you know, I think, yes, you know, I, w I kind of wish I'd been encouraged to do that more. Figure out what, what was my passion. Uh, and, uh, but then, again, our journey is our journey. I, I found my passion at the right time. Had I not had the challenges, if you like, and the midlife crisis at 28, I would never have ended up discovering what my passion was, I don't think. So I don't regret anything at all, but it was just lovely to hear him saying that, if you like, to the future generations, those people just going out into the world. Um, so yeah, a lot of thought-provoking things coming from going back to my old school on Saturday for a couple of uh, a couple of hours, uh, doing that thing that we always do of, of the comparison. It wasn't a reunion. If, if it had been a reunion, I think I would have been. That would have, I would have found that harder because you can't help but compare yourself to everybody else <laughs> uh, of where they've kind of come in life. But it, but this was really, I think it was really helpful uh, going back and and kind of having all these thoughts and memories going through my head and going, yeah, that was a really good chapter of my life. Uh, but I've moved on so much. So much has happened since then. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and um, it was also really interesting because uh, Dr. Michael Mosley was there, I presume because uh, one of his children goes to the school. Um, he was there uh, in, in the audience, if you like. Now, Dr. Michael Mosley is the man who discovered, invented, uh, created, wrote a book about the 5-2 diet. So eating normally for five days, fasting for two. Now, obviously I do a variation of that. I actually fast for three days and I eat normally for four. So I'm kind of doing the four, t four, uh, four th no, four, th four, three diet. Fast, yeah, fast for three days, eat normally for four. Um, and it was all I could do to go up to him, to stop myself from going up to him and saying, oh, you're, your book, your method has revolutionalized my life. Uh, you know, I've lost seven and a half stone as a result of following uh, four, three rather than five, two. Uh, and, you know, being a little bit of a super fan. I, I didn't, I was really good because I thought this is not appropriate to do this now. But it, it again, it, 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 it felt ironic that uh, the journey that I'm on at the moment uh, and there was somebody significant who I'd read about and I've seen him on the TV and he was there in the flesh. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, quite quite interesting. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so quite a bit of feedback and learning, like I say, the cookies and the carrot cake uh, and uh, the realization of I'm here where I am now, which is not, which is very uh, different to where I was when I was at school 25 years ago or leaving school 25 years ago. 
um, but a chapter of my life. Uh, and uh, yeah, a useful check-in almost. Okay, moving on. Um, support. Uh, what support have I had? Uh, as always, I get support from Do My TRE every week. Um, and that is also support now from my husband, who is doing the TRE as well. Uh, I think he had a significant shift uh, last week while doing it. Um, and uh, actually supporting myself, um, being kind and compassionate to myself, which is really hard. <laughs> There's a part in, uh, in the TRE uh, uh, at the end where you're kind of just resting and processing what's gone on for you during the session uh, and uh, Marisa the, 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 the my counsellor who runs runs the class uh, she says uh, use this time to treat yourself with kindness and compassion and for about the first six months every time she said that it brought tears uh, because we so rarely treat ourselves with kindness and compassion we are after all only human uh, we make mistakes uh, and we have to learn and change. We have a choice about whether we learn and change from our mistakes uh, and um, yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a significant phrase for me that, treat yourself with kindness and compassion, but that for me uh, is how I am supporting myself on my journey. Uh, time. It will take as long as it takes. I say this every week. Uh, one pound this week is one pound in the right direction. Um, and there really is no rush. Uh, maybe I've plateaued a bit over the last few months because my brain has been catching up with the changes in my body. Um, it could be that. I know I had that sort of a bit, bit over Christmas as well. Um, but almost because of Saturday, because of going to my old school, I feel like there's a shift. I feel like my brain has, has gone, yeah. Because in fact, funnily enough, um, uh, the girl that I shared my study with who was there, Karina, she actually said she had to do a bit of a double take. Uh, she thought it was me, but she wasn't quite sure. Um, I think she noticed that I was slimmer than I was when I was at school. I wasn't, I don't think, I don't think, I was massively bigger than now. So she never saw me when I was really huge, when I started this journey. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, again, I think uh, it was uh, significant in terms of acknowledging, hey, I am really making quite a difference. So again, time, it will take as long as it takes. And I'm fine with that. Uh, doing the doing. Uh, been to the gym three times over the last week. Uh, went swimming, where did I go swimming? I can't even remember how many. I think I went Friday morning as well, and I definitely went yesterday morning. Didn't go this morning uh, because my husband's gone out to work today, and if I go swimming, then we don't get to have breakfast together. So having breakfast with my husband was more important this morning than going swimming. Uh, but I will go swimming again tomorrow morning. It's quite good going swimming in the morning, actually, because if I time it right, uh, I get a lane to myself, um, which means I can go at my own pace. Um, food. I will plan my food again this week. Um, I'm not planning on meeting on, up with any friends for lunch or anything, so I'm less likely to be tempted. Um, and uh, what else is doing the doing? The food, the exercise, oh, and the support, of course, the, 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 the TRE. I think that's it for the doing the doing. Um, and the method, of course, remains the same. Um, what are we having for dinner tonight? Fish, salmon, for, so a low, a low calorie, uh, low fat. Fish on a Tuesday and a Thursday, meat on a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, and of course the rest of the week is my three egg omelette with cheese. So, you know, the method really does work, but um, how did I, I can't remember how I even had this as a reminder, but I need, I, I was reminded this week of the fact that essentially my body is in ketosis, i.e. it's using uh, my fat stores rather than using carb and sugar from my my food if I eat carbs and sugar then that will mean that it takes me about two three days to go back into ketosis ie using my fat stores so last week when I had um, carrot cake uh, and chocolate cookies on uh, white chocolate cookies on Tuesday and then I had some more white chocolate cookies on 
Thursday, that meant that that I didn't come out of, I, I was out of ketosis for most of the week, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So really, I've only had one or two days in ketosis this week, which is why, think about it, that's why I've only lost a pound. So again, uh, if I can keep reminding myself, not just is, not only is eating carbs and sugar, you know, not good for me, because I have an addiction to them, but it is also gonna take me out of ketosis for two to three days, which means that my weight loss will be less. Almost that logic, uh, that fact, will probably have more of an impact on me than a fancy white chocolate cookies. And because if, if I then go, yeah, but I'm gonna lose about three days of potential weight loss, that, that will probably have more of an impact on me than you don't need the carbs and the sugar. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, so that's it for my five uh, success factors this week. Um, how did you get on? Do let me know. I always love to know. Oh, and I should say as well, um, very excited this week because uh, you might be able to see my, uh, my veg beds. Uh, I've got tomato plants, uh, French climbing beans. What did I, uh, spring onions are growing. I planted, uh, what did I, beetroot and radishes uh, this weekend, see what they, how they come up. It's very exciting because um, I'm having a barbecue for friends and family in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, so we'll actually be able to harvest some of the things in the garden, hopefully. But um, our French climbing beans have actually got beans on them and they're big enough that tonight, uh, with our uh, salmon dinner, uh, we'll be able to actually have some of our own homegrown uh, beans, literally freshly picked from the garden, picked straight into the steamer and then on the plate. Uh, and I can't, I can't wait. I know it sounds really silly, but uh, you know, just to to uh, sort of live off the land and, and what you've actually grown yourself, rather than having to go to the shops, uh, is uh, is really exciting. I've dreamt of being able to do that uh, in this garden for about ten years, uh, and it's it's going to finally become a reality. So uh, yeah, that's really exciting. All right, do let me know how you got on uh, this week. Uh, have a good week, and I shall see you same time, same place uh, next week as always. Take care. Bye bye.